guys, so I'm here today to do my mid-month book haul. It's not quite the middle of the month, but I already have quite a pile of books, most of which were sent to me by the publishers. So I wanted to show them to you before the month was out. There's some that I'm really excited for here, and um, some that were complete surprises, and maybe a couple I bought myself, okay? So let's jump straight into it, shall we? Let's jump straight into it, shall we? The first book is a book I have been awaiting for over a year. I am so excited for this book and I feel so, so lucky that um, Faber were kind enough to send me a copy for free. That was so kind because, oh my god, I can't explain to you how excited I've been for this book. It is Battling the Gods, Atheism in the Ancient World by Tim Whitmarsh. Tim Whitmarsh is one of my all-time favourite ancient Greek scholars. He um, does lots of work on stuff that I'm interested in. He currently teaches at Oxford and this is his latest book. What more could you want from a book on ancient times, atheism in the ancient world? Because atheism in the ancient world is nowhere near the same as it is today. It's not as prevalent, it's not as acceptable, it comes in very different versions and I can't wait to read a book all about it. It even has a quote from Mary Beard on the front. I then have a pile of books which were complete surprises to me. I was not expecting them to come in the post and they were from Pan Macmillan. I know they sent a few Christmas boxes to a few different YouTubers. I feel very privileged to be one of them and I think they did a pretty good job because I am excited for most of these books and I will show you those ones now. Um, the first one is a graphic novel. You know how I love a graphic novel and that's called Dan and Sam. This one's published by Picador which comes under the same umbrella as Pan Macmillan. And this is a graphic novel by Mark Watson and Oliver Harood. Almost all in black and white, except for a few random pages which are in colour, so that's really interesting. It's about this married couple, the wife who dies, but is able to come back to spend one day of the year with her husband every year. So that sounds pretty awesome. I can't wait to see what this is about. I imagine it deals a lot with grief and love. So yeah, really interesting. I then have The Birth of the Pill, a non-fiction book about how four pioneers reinvented sex and launched a revolution by Jonathan Eag. <laughs> I mean, the, the title of this one's pretty self-explanatory. Um, just sounds awesome. I love this kind of thing. So, really, really interested to read it. I, mean, I think it's fair to say that the pill has done a lot for women in particular and being able to choose whether to have children or not. So it'll be exciting to see how that all came about. Now, the next one's also kind of on a female feminist -y theme and it is Lucia Berlin's A Manual for Cleaning Women and this is a collection of short stories by the author, presumably about women, given the title. Sounds awesome, I love the title, like this is a pretty epic title and I've been getting really into short story collections over the past year so cannot wait to read more in 2016 and this will definitely be one of them. Now the next one you'll know I'll be super pleased to have a copy of because I own two others from this collection. This will be my third one and it is The Wren Boys by Carol Ann Duffy illustrated by Dermot Flynn and these are little poetry books that the Picador bring out every year by Carol Ann Duffy retelling different Christmas stories in poetry and I own two others already like I said they're so cute they're so sweet they're full of lovely illustrations and I really enjoy Carol and Duffy's poetry so I'm really excited to have this one. Then we have A Whole Life by Robert C. Taylor, C. Taylor um, which looks like this. Now I have been seeing this all over the bookshops like every time I walk into Watterson's this is on one of the front tables um, so I was very intrigued when this got sent to me and it's very short so it wouldn't take me long to find out. I believe it's about a solitary man who lives in like rural countryside and it's about his like sort of solitary lifestyle and his relationship with the landscape and it's set in the mid 1900s. It sounds very interesting and very introspective so hopefully a good one. I then have another book of poetry that was sent to me by the publisher and that is Tongit could be pronouncing that wrong. Awesome Scott here. But this is published by Freight, who are a Scottish publishing company. This is from their poetry division and it's by Harry Giles. And what really, really drew me to this book was not only that it was poetry, which included bits of Scots language, which I really enjoy, but it also deals with modern issues in Scotland. So like the bedroom tax and cuts to local services. So it's very political and I love political poetry. And these are things I very much care about today and now. It's also got poems about the rise of Atos, which is a really awful thing. It sounds awesome. So pleased to see a book of poetry about these topics and cannot wait to read it. And I then have a book that was actually sent to me by the translator and I'm sure you'll recognise the original author and that is 
Human Act by Han Kang, a novel. Now, I read The Vegetarian by Han Kang in 2015. It was one of my favourite books of the year. absolutely adored it. I'll link the review down below. And Han Kang is a South Korean author who obviously writes in Korean. And her other book was translated by Deborah Smith, who has now translated a second piece of her work. She did an amazing job of translating The Vegetarian. I absolutely adored it. I found it so beautiful to read. Perfect team, in my opinion. So I'm so pleased to see that... Um, Smith has translated another of Kang's novels. Cannot wait to read this one. I believe this one's more set during a period of South Korean history and a sort of death or murder that takes place in Korea and the aftermath. In fact, I think there's multiple deaths in this book, but more surrounding real events, um, but a fictional account. So really, really looking forward to reading this one. Um, really enjoyed my first foray into Korean literature and I think it's going to be great that my next one has more to do with the history of Korea. And now a book that wasn't sent to me by the publisher but was in fact sent to me by my lovely friend Jen over at Jen V Campbell who read this book, didn't actually like it that much and was just getting rid of it. I had heard a lot about it and wanted to give it my own, and wanted to develop my own opinions on it and give it a shot so I decided to take it off her hands. I'm very grateful, obviously, um, for her sending it to me, and that is Men Explain Things to Me and Other Essays by Re Rebecca Solnit, and this is a collection of feminist essays. Um, really short, beautiful little book, although from what I gather from Jen's review is that it doesn't really include enough information, which is unfortunate. And so maybe not that great being short, but I'll definitely give it a chance and I'm looking forward to seeing what I think of it. I know Lauren from Reads and Daydreams has a copy as well and wants to read it, so maybe we'll do a buddy read of that. And the last book I didn't pay for in this haul is uh, All the Birds in the Sky by Charlie Jane Anders. And this is a proof copy sent to me by Titan Books. Really gorgeous proofs. I hope the final thing looks something like this because I really like the design on the front. And this one is in fact all about a witch who communicates with birds. So magic, witchcraft, birds, speaking to animals, things I really enjoy in a book. And it's about her reconnecting with someone from her childhood, then both being on very different sides of a war between magic and science. Then like I said, I did buy a couple of books. Now this one I was obligated to buy, and that is The Adamantine Palace, There Will Be Flames by Stephen Dees. I made the mistake of picking up um, King of the Crags or something like that. Also by Stephen Dees, thinking it was the first book in the series of an epic fantasy series which involved dragons, as you can tell on the front. Turns out it's not the first, as a lot of you told me, which is really great because the book itself gave no indications it was not the first in a series. It didn't imply that on the, the description on the back. It didn't have numbers anywhere. I just feel like a series should be obligated to have numbers like one, two, and three on the spine. So I have picked up the first now. I actually got this second hand on Amazon and it was super cheap. So that was really good and it's like brand new. But now I can start the series in full knowledge that I am starting from the right place. And like I said, this is an epic fantasy series about warring um, cities and um, kingdoms and dragons. So sounds pretty awesome. Hopefully I like it and the second one wasn't a waste of money. And I then have three books I picked up on the Booktuber meetup. Um, we had a Booktube meetup in Glasgow and it was really, really nice. Everyone was so lovely. I'd met most of the people that were there before, but not everybody and it was really nice to meet more people in person and we just had such a nice time going around all the shop bookshops in Glasgow and of course I had to pick up a few books. I think I did quite well only picking up three though uh, and two of them were second hand, so yeah. But everyone was wonderful and I'll link everybody's channels in the description box down below so I check them all out because they were all super, super duper nice and I had such a nice day with them. Um, and yeah, I love book shopping with other booktubers. It's like we get each other. <laughs> so first, the first book I got is the one that I paid full price for and it is Tipping the Velvet by Sarah Waters. I have still not read any Sarah Waters. I own one other of her books which I think is the one that is her most recent book. It's huge, I have it in a huge hardback edition and it's quite off-putting. This one however is in a nice small hardback edition and it's from the Virago series which are all illustrated in this kind of fashion. I also own an Emma Donoghue book in these editions so they'll look lovely together. Also some of the other booktubers there when we were shopping said that Tipping the Velvet was pretty awesome so definitely looking forward to this being my first Sarah Waters this year. This is a saucy romance set in the 1890s. I think a lot of Sarah Waters' books, if not all of them, um, are about lesbian couples. 
Um, so I'm presuming this one is as well. And then the two books I picked up second hand, wow this video is long, are um, Isabel Allende's Aphrodite which I'd never heard of before but I really like Isabel Allende's writing. She is a Chilean writer. As this book implies is based on um, Aphrodite, the Greek goddess. So I had to pick it up because it was by an author I liked and I love books about Greek myths and characters from Greek myths. So I'm really excited to see kind of how this is structured when I'm reading it and yeah just really looking forward to it. And last but not least is also a sort of retelling of some classic um, legends. These are actually Angela Carter's retelling of the fairy tales of Charles Perrault and you may have heard that name as he is the original author of Cinderella. So these are Angela Carter's retellings of his fairy tales. Um, I read Angela Carter's Bloody Chamber and other stories uh, a couple of years ago now which is also her retellings of classic fairy tales loved it like absolutely loved it so now I cannot wait to read more of her fairy tale retellings and this is a lovely penguin modern classics edition super skinny this one's going to take me like a day to read it's not even a hundred pages um so yeah really really excited to read more Angela Carter fairy tale retellings but those are all the books I had to show you in this video I hope you enjoyed it but until next time guys happy reading and I'll see you all again soon bye